Honoring the Words, the Council of Conference, Reverend Michael Hutchins, President of the Library College, Dr. Matthew Pendera Temple, Vice President for Academic Affairs, esteemed faculty, staff, and Board of Trustees, honored family, friends, and guests, fellow classmates, and beloved graduates. I am honored have the chance to stand before you today as class valedictorian. Looking back at the four years I've spent here, I myself am surprised at how much growth and change I have undergone since entering those sliding college doors as a wide-eyed freshman. I was told that as valedictorian, I am charged with sharing with you any wisdom or insight I've gained over the years of an academic nature. Certainly a noble charge, and I have been but a simple student for as long as you've known me, but I will try my best. Perhaps I can begin by relaying to you a brief philosophical discourse that I was privileged to be a witness to on this very campus only a few months ago in our very own dining room. It was during lunch on a sunny Saturday afternoon when one of our philosophy professors, Father Oliver Fulab, in true Socratic fashion, somehow veered the course of the table's conversation into philosophical waters. <laughs> he asked Sister Celine Chantal something to the effect of, what is the meaning of life? What does it mean to live? To which Sister Twa almost immediately answered, it's to have love somewhat perturbed expression on his face, Father Oliver then asked, well, what is love then? At this point, I cringed. I have seen this all played out too often in Plato's dialogues, and it never bodes well for Socrates' conversation partners. I had some thoughts of my own about it, and I could have interjected and introduced some points. But I was intrigued to see how an ESL level 4 student no philosophical, formal philosophical training, would fare against the wits of a seasoned philosopher. <laughs> she looked around the dining room for a bit, and finally returning her gaze to the table, she said, there, pointing to the bowl, love is in the soup. <laughs> All of the philosophical training in the world cannot have prepared me for that response. Obviously, the answer needed qualification. If Dr. Condon or any philosophy professor, for that matter, gave a pop quiz in class and asked us what love was, and I simply wrote, love is in the soup, that would be grounds for an F for sure. <laughs> so she clarified her response. Sometimes it tastes good. Sometimes it doesn't give us any strong feelings. But we consume it survive. Notice that Sister Twa never gave a definition of what love is. If there's something true about that, about love being in the soup and its consumption for our survival, growth, and well-being. By the way, Father Oliver and I both deemed that an acceptable response. <laughs> You're probably wondering why I brought that conversation up at all. Well, perhaps I can ask the seminarians why they're studying at Divine Word College. Of course, I'm sure many of you would be tempted to say that we seminarians are here to get our bachelor's degrees, to go to Novitiate, and on to the Olivet, and then do CTP, and so on and so forth. <coughs> but that doesn't seem quite right not quite complete. Some may seriously engage in some serious discernment and find out that God is not calling them to religious life. <clears throat> Has their time here been wasted? I think not. I used to hear from former classmates who withdrew that their time here was not for nothing. So what is it that is so valuable that we learn here? Well, what we learn here is to better lovers, and I 
use that in the broadest sense possible. As people called to love. It annoys me, or irritates me, when I hear students ask, when am I ever going to need to use what I learned in philosophy? Why do I need to learn about the Greek order of columns? What's the point of learning this if I'm going to forget over half of this material anyway? Here's my question. Why do students arbitrarily assign these questions to academics? I could just as easily ask questions like, why do you work out and exercise when your body is just going to die and decay anyway? Why do you go to confession when you know you're just going to sin again? Why do you have or make friends when you have the chance to lose them or that they might lose you? The answer is simply love. <coughs> you love yourself and you love others. So when you reserve those questions solely for academics, I'm inclined to say that you're asking the wrong questions. Instead ask, do I love myself enough to challenge myself intellectually? Do I love God enough to exercise my God-given capacity to think and reason? Do I love those around me enough to be a well-informed, well-rounded citizen who cares about what happens in the world? I'd like to close my speech by answering a question that I've hesitated to respond out of fear that you might not be ready to hear it. But seeing as how I may never get this opportunity again, here it goes. Many students this past year have asked me what the trick is to being so committed to my studies. I had to reflect on this for a while, and the answer I came up with was rather embarrassing. So I'm banking on the fact that, as a general rule, no one remembers these speeches. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not always conscious of this, but I think of my relationship with academics as just that, a relationship. You know, the kind where there's a lover involved. I'm not talking about the broad sense kind of lover that I mentioned earlier in my speech. I'm talking about something along the lines of a significant other type of deal. Some days, lady academia can be sweet, charming, and genuinely fun to be around. And other days, she can be a rather harsh sister. There's so much to learn about her. I consider myself a rather faithful boyfriend. <laughs> she makes bids for my attention. I typically give it to her. Yes, sometimes I'd rather be watching the Dallas Mavericks sweep the Lakers out of playoff contention <laughs> or just hang out with the guys. At which point she'll report her dismay about my shortcomings to one of our many qualified relationship counselors. <laughs> uh, Dr. Taylor's door is always open to clients. And Father Stephen will do most of the talking in his counseling session. And I have the rare privilege of having Reverend Michael Hutchins as one of my relationship counselors. And it was very fun because he let me grade myself on how well I was doing with it. And she usually wins her case for good reason, for noticing my shortcomings. And I'll get advice for what I'm doing wrong and how I can fix it. I'll forget some things about her and feel very frustrated about it. And I take it personally when someone makes me aware of something about her that I should have already known. We may get into some serious disagreements, but it's not like I'm going to give up on her. Last but not least, we make sweet, sweet love. <laughs> There's a lot of wrestling involved. Certainly been memorable.
honorable years. May God bless each and every one of you, and to all the students, I wish you the best of luck.